Good morning. Welcome, friends. Here we are, the family of God. Welcome, Welcome friends. friends. Here we are, the triune God. God. The Father who welcomes us no matter our age, race, or gender. The Son who died, died rose, rose for us so that we, we can, can live, live like, like him. him. The, the Spirit, Spirit who gives, gives us wisdom, wisdom power, power, and love, and love to, to live, live like, like him. him. On this third Sunday after Easter, we begin a series on Sabbath rest. God, you are our creator, savior, and sanctifier. You set us up, you set us free, you set us apart. We live in an age that prioritizes productivity. We live in a time that raves about results. We live in an era consumed with consumption, and we live in a season bound up with busyness. But God, you made us in your image. We are not machines, we need rest. Jesus, you said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened. We confess we are tired. We confess we have heavy burdens. Jesus, you said, I will give you rest. We confess we need your kind of rest. God, you are the source of Sabbath rest. Spirit, help us slow down. Help us be still. Help us catch our breath. I'll say that again. Spirit, help us slow down. Help us be still. Help us catch our breath. Father, thank you for the gift of rest. Jesus, teach us what it means to rest in you. Spirit, send us share rest with others. Help us, Lord. Help us proclaim Jesus. Help us pray relentlessly. Help us cultivate growth. Help us embrace unity. Help us equip servants. Help us love sacrificially. And Amen. We're going to sing the doxology this morning. Let's stand as we do that. praise to the King this morning. Praise to the King, His throne transcends, His crown and kingdom never ends. Now and throughout eternity, oh, 
I'll praise the one who died for me. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God who saved my soul. Praise God, oh, praise God, praise God from whom all blessings seated this morning. Find some people around you and greet one another. All right. What a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. There's a few things going on but before we get to those few things, uh, we want to welcome you. We want to say we are glad you are here, whether this is your first time or your 6,235th time. You're not, that's a lot of times. You are here for a reason today, and it's not an accident. And so one of the things that we do is we want to get to know new people, people been around, or maybe you have a prayer quest, uh, you can do that with the card, the Connect card that's in your bulletin, or you can go online to stillnaz.com slash connect. We invite you to go there. We also have a, a Next Step booths. You can stop in the back there. Joe is back there today. Wave your hands, Joe. Joe's back there. So you can say hi to Joe. And um, if you need some information on how to get into a small group, get connected, you can do that there. Um, again, stillnaz.com slash connect or that card. You can drop it in the joy boxes on your way out. All right, so that's one thing. Uh, we have a Journey House paint night, but if you'll notice the time, this is on Sunday, April 28th. It's a more of a paint afternoon. All right, so, um, but they've called it paint night in the past, so I'm, I think that's what we're going to call it. Paint afternoon, Sunday, April 28th, 2 to 4.30 p.m. I think I saw on the way in this morning a painting of what that might look like. Um, you can uh, buy your tickets in advance. It's required, actually, by the 24th. And I think there's a bulletin card in there that gives information for how much it is and how you can do that. All right? Then we also have some Still Naz swag. Um, if you want to look like us, um, and like the rest of the time, the rest of the week, or whatever, even on Sunday, we have some um, stuff with our logo on it. You can order that. You can take a picture of that with your phone now and use that, or you can use the card that's in the bulletin, or you can go online. There's all kind of ways you can order that swag, and then in a couple weeks it'll come in, and we'll make sure you get that, all right? We want you to look like us, too. I see some people. Keep that up there, because I see some people with their phones or a person with their phone, and then we'll go on to the next. I'm going to go on to the next announcement. Anyway, it's car wash. It's car wash. Now, if you're like me, um, I like to get a lot. Uh, I feel like to feel like I'm getting a lot of money when I go to the car. Uh, my money's worth when I go to the car wash. Um, so I kind of let them. I let them go for a little while. I'm not one that washes it every couple of days. Okay. So um, if you're one of those people, or if you're one of those people who just we're talking about rest, Sabbath rest, right, Pastor? We, the teens will wash your car for you on that Saturday. So you don't have to do it yourself. We're giving you opportunities to find rest. I just put that together. All right, so the 
youth are doing a car wash April 27th. That's in a couple Saturdays from 9 a.m. to noon. It'll be right out here, out front. That's where they normally do it. Um, so come between those times. Have them wash your car. It'll be awesome. You'll go away with a clean car. They will have worked. They get money. You get rest. It's, it's just a blessing all around. Okay? So car wash coming up. One more thing. Um, we, God has been good to us, amen? And he gives us the opportunity to share the first fruits of the blessings that he pours out on us through the local church. And then what, that ha what happens with that is that goes around the world. Um, through our ties and offerings, we minister in Haiti. We minister in, um, I met our Lynx missionaries this last week um, down in Argentina. Uh, these things do it. The offerings that we give go incredible places, incredible places where God's doing his work, um, not just here in New York, but it does here too. So um, we are so blessed, and we need to bless God with our first fruits and then our offerings on top of that. And we do that through our joy boxes. So we used to have ushers come, and come down and come back and then pass the plate. But now we're doing this. If you would like to give, please give that way. You can give online at stillnaz.com slash give. Um, that give you instructions of ways you can have the bank send a monthly check. I mean, there's all kinds of ways that we, uh, opportunities we give, we give you to give back to God. And so um, we just want to pray for that offering now. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity you give us to bless others because you have blessed us so much. Pray this morning that um, as uh, people walk by the joy boxes this morning as they give, maybe somebody's walking by this morning and, and Lord, there just hasn't been income. Lord, that you'd bless them too. They would feel your presence. Lord, we love you want to serve you and want to sing to you. In Jesus' name. As we uh, get ready to sing and worship this morning, I want to invite you to stand, but I also want to let you know that uh, our altars are open at any time as we worship. Let's stand. Let's sing together. On the day the earth was born, in each miracle performed, in every life transformed, you were there. In our joy and in our grief, oh, in our doubt. In our belief, in our waking and our sleep, you are there. Sing it out. Faithful Father, only God is mighty Savior, only God is
unto him who is faithful we and honor let's sing that one more time oh unto him who is faithful to do it all again be all glory and honor
this morning. Heavenly Father, it is truly good to be in your house today. This is your house. This is where we can come to be with you collectively. We can gather together in this space of worship to truly worship you. You are worthy of all glory, worthy of all praise. God, because you first loved us, you didn't require us to come to you, to seek you out, to, to, to love you first. You reached out to us from the beginning of time, but then culminating in this sacrificial love of Jesus Christ. And God, we're the beneficiaries. We can just be people who can live out a love for you and a love for one another. And that's what you've called us to do. So God, thank you for being who you are. Thank you for this opportunity to gather together in this place this morning that we can worship you in song and with your word. God, we do want to... Uh, mention a few things that we are we are grateful for god for tyler and alicia warrants and their new baby girl god we just pray that you'd bless her and bless this family god children are such a beautiful gift they represent new life and new life is a great thing god we pray for gabe hurlbert and Casey Harrison, as they begin their, their journey as district license ministers. God, they received their district license last weekend. And God, as they're continuing their, their journey um, towards ordination, uh, God, that you would just bless them in all their, their efforts and all their ministry. God, for Mackenzie Alley, as she's recovering from surgery, God, just a, a little child again but a little child in need of your touch, your healing touch on her body. 
God, in this season of renewal, we do pray for a revival that sweeps through our church, that sweeps through our land, that sweeps through our world. God, we know that there's always been a need for you in this world. This world has lost its way in so many ways. And we're such in need of you. God, would you, would you revive us in our own spirits and would you create an awakening in our world, a thirst for you, God, that we may find you? Because you said if we seek you, if we seek you with all of our hearts, we will find you. There is no way you will hide your face from us. Thank you, Lord. God, for Pastor Rachel, as she uh, prepares for a transition into a new ministry in Hagerstown, God, we pray you bless her, bless her family, and bless the children's ministry here. God, that in this time of transition, we would see you at work in all of this. And God, as we've already prayed for renewal, revival, we pray for those who are definitely in need of coming to you the first time. People who, who don't really know that they need you yet, but they do. We all do. So God, we pray that you would uh, bring more and more people to you in these days. God, as we continue to worship in this service, we've just, we, we commit this time to you. Move in our hearts, move in our minds. Draw us closer to you as we continue. And we love you. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. Precious Lord, reveal your heart to me. Father, holy, holy. Universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy, the universe declares your majesty. You are holy. God of wonders. All right, I need to do something. This is in the middle, and that's not. And so it's going to bother me. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay. All right. That white line right there is kind of like where I line it up. Okay, we got this. <laughs> like I'm getting ready to kick a field goal or something. Okay. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy. Can I get a hallelujah? Man, he has made an incredible world that we get to share, that we get to live in and we get to take care of. I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for the wonders that he shares with us. I'm grateful for the wonders that he has given us within this community, within his church. Um, we saw in this last week, um, Burdette um, prayed about these two. I'm going to show you a picture of two people that we just prayed for. Uh, we just prayed for um, Gabe and Casey. Um, this is the night that they uh, both received their first district license. We can woo-woo! So I'm grateful for their obedience um, to God and that just that we're a part of a denomination and a church that's raising up leaders. And um, I'm really grateful, too. Like, we've seen um, Pastor Rachel go through this same exact process, and now we get to be a church body sending her to Hagerstown um, Church of the Nazarene, where she's going to serve as lead pastor. So I'm excited. I don't have her picture up there. But we are going to celebrate on August. Not August. I did this last week, too. On April 28th. Um, and that is going to be the evening from 5 to 7. That's why the paint night is now a paint afternoon, um, because we're having a potluck and we're going to celebrate her and her family. And so I really hope that you carve the time out to come and remember what God has done and bless her and her family into her next season. Um, God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy. And so let's um, look at this next picture. Um, that's Simba, if you've never met my puppy. Um, and we protected his eyes. Um, on Monday. Anybody else um, stop and watch the, the eclipse? Um, I was, it was amazing. I, I was really grateful that we had the opportunity as a community to do that. Um, in our own neighborhood, um, I heard gasps throughout the streets as people were looking up and going, ooh, ooh, look, look. Uh, did you guys look at the news um, and see the pictures? There's just crowds of people staring with their glasses reminds me that like there's going to be a day when everybody is out right and we're all going to be looking up without glasses to see the real son the son of god the son of suffering but coming to renew and restore all the world to bring justice to set everything right and so those scenes i'm like oh my gosh that's inspiring but look at how god has set up this world it was also a reminder and we're going to keep this picture that um we often just rush by the wonder. And we don't stop. Just go, go, go. 
And so this series that we're starting today is called Renew, and it's looking at the idea of Sabbath and how we as a people of God can receive the gift of Sabbath, rest, that only comes from Him. It is, it's a preparation for um, our summer sabbatical where I and my family will be gone from June 3rd through August 18th. Um, but it's also, it's a season for us to kind of, what, what does it look like, to ask the question, what does it look like for us to be a community that rests in God well and gives God's rest well? And so, um, I, I like this. He stopped, looked. Um, and I'm hoping that this season is a um, series for us to catch our breath, right? That this is a time, and that's on the next slide, this is a time for us to catch our breath. And, and the truth is, is we live in a really fast-paced world that seems to be getting faster by the day. And I must confess that I'm coming into this series tired. This week, as I was preparing, I'm like, God, my schedule is crazy right now. I don't, like, I am not the one to be teaching on this because, like, I'm just, like, ah! I've got three kids on track teams and doing all their school things, and I'm doing all these church things, and I'm preparing for sabbatical and transitions, and ah! So that's how I'm coming into this series. <laughs> I imagine I'm not the only one. It's like going from race to race at a track meet without stopping and getting enough time to catch our breath. And I want to put out a couple things at the start of the series. I don't want you to hear this as finger-wagging shame. Like, look at you, your schedule out of whack. Look at you, so tired. Look at you, out of control. No, 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 no. That's the voice of our enemy who wants you to feel shame, who wants you to hide, and who wants you to give up. But the voice of our loving Father is this. I have rest for you. Come to me. Enjoy me. Enjoy the rest I have for you. And so this is not something coming to you like, all right, here's another thing to put on your task list. No, this is an invitation to find what true rest is in God himself. So please hear that. I also um, want you to know we're going to be looking at some Old Testament references, um, and we as Christians read the entire Old Testament through the lens of Jesus Christ. And so we understand the commands and things from the Old Testament as interpreted through Jesus' new commands, which the new command, summarizing all of it, is love God, love others, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so when we get to some of the harsh punishments for disobeying Sabbath, let's hear, well, let's see that actually God is inviting us to Sabbath, but not to kill those who don't Sabbath. All right? I'm just putting that out there before we get there, and you're like, what in the world? All right? And so um, to start our series, let's look at our two memory verses. I've got two this time. We're going to be high achievers, all right? Um, and I want us to read these aloud and then take a little pause to kind of receive them. I'm going to set my timer on my phone. I'm not going to tell you for how long. I will tell you it's not 20 minutes, all right? My wife was the only one who thought that was funny. <laughs> oh. um. But let's say these verses together. Uh, Psalm 116.7, Return to your rest, my soul. For the Lord has been good to you. And then Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. We're going to leave those on the screen and just invite the Holy Spirit to speak to you through those two invitations. Maybe choose a word or a phrase to focus your mind and heart on.
If you fell asleep, that's all right. That was two minutes, if you were wondering how long that was. Some of you probably were timing it. I know, I know. I invite you to, to memorize these. And throughout this season, and maybe for the rest of your life, have these in your mind and in your heart as invitations. Remembering that our true rest is found nowhere else except God himself. And that how Jesus operates with us when we're exhausted is that, that verse on the bottom there, come to me, right? When we're just ready to throw up our hands, he's like, come on, come on, come over here. I'll give you rest. I need you to learn from me. So in the first couple weeks of this series, we're going really, to be asking the question, why rest? I'm preaching this week, and Professor, Pastor Brian Hull from Asbury University, a good friend of mine who used to be on our district that now teaches um, at Asbury University, which I just mentioned, uh, he's going to be preaching out of the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, looking at the need for rest. Uh, and the week after that, I'm going to be looking at Jesus as the Lord of the Sabbath, and really, these first three wet weeks are like, why should we rest? And today, let's just recognize that we rest because God did and he commanded it. We can trust that his commands come from what he knows is good for us. He knows we need to catch our breath. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 1 into chapter 2 today because in the story of creation, we see that God worked hard for six days creating the world and putting it into right order and then rested and caught his breath on the seventh day. I'm going to invite you to stand as we read Genesis chapter 1 verses 24 through chapter 2 verse 3. We're coming in at the end of the week, it's days six and seven. So a lot of things have happened on days one through five. Um, but we're, I want us to see the difference between day six and day seven. And day six is actually just going to represent all the other days where God was creating. Okay. So here we go. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw it was good. And then God said, and this is the last thing he makes, by the way, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And then God said, You're probably hungry. So I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And also to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath, or ruah, of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. And by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. And so on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Now, this is the word of God for the people of God. Can someone say, thanks be to God? You may be seated. It's fun to compare um, 
the creation account of Genesis to the creation accounts um, that were actually being told and spread in the day of the Israelites when they were first telling the stories. Because the, uh, the, other, the other nations, they had their creation stories too. But the other creation stories were full of violence. If you want to Google it, just look up Enuma Elish and you can see how God split each other in half and then created the world out of that and then made humans not in their image as gods, not to share rule with them, but for them to be their slaves as gods. Here in this story, we see God actually made the world with intentionality. You can even see grace woven throughout each one of the days. God leans back and says, it is good. And then when he makes humanity, he makes humanity in his image to be his icons, to be his representatives in the world so that they may rule over the fish and over everything. When you look in the mirror, you're looking at someone who was made in the image of the maker. You're looking at someone who has a sacred dignity and a sacred duty. This is awesome. And when you look at anyone, you see someone made in the image of God. And so God carefully crafted this world, saying it was good, blessing things. And then this is what's so interesting. On the last day, day seven, what does he do? He actually sets that day apart. He blesses that day. He'd been blessing the creatures. Now he's actually blessing time itself. And it says that he made it holy or sanctified it. He set it apart for a sacred purpose. This creation story was a story that the Israelites carried with them. They understood their God as intentionally making the world, but also taking a break from the make. Isn't that something to think about? This holy day that God set apart. And so in the story of creation, we see God actually stopping, resting. And then in the story of his people, when you read from Exodus all the way through Deuteronomy, you see how God gives the invitation to Sabbath rest repeatedly. It's in both sets of the Ten Commandments, which you find in Exodus and Deuteronomy. It's peppered throughout all the various laws, the invitation to rest. And I, I want us to look particularly at the kind of the detail that he gives in Exodus chapter 31, verses 12 through 17. Because in, in Exodus 31, he actually says that he's giving them this day as a sign between them, kind of like a ring a symbol of the covenant that they share. It would be something that would remind them that they were kept and held, a symbol to the world to know they belong to their maker and their savior, the one who set them up and then set them free from the oppressive Egyptians. And so let's look at Exodus chapter 31. And this, by the way, is where you first read about if you violate Sabbath, you're supposed to die. Okay, we live under Jesus' rule, who himself, he died for our sins. He took all the punishment that was due to us. And so now as Christians, we live different. We don't live under the Old Testament law in the same way, unless it leads us to love, right? Okay, so, then the Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites, you must observe my Sabbaths, and this will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come. I've heard some people say that as the Israelites kept the Sabbath, the Sabbath kept them. Because, listen to this, so that you may know that I am the Lord. I'm the one who makes you holy. In Genesis chapter 2, what did God make holy? He made time itself, the resting day, holy. Right here, this is a way to remember, I'm the one setting you apart. You're not the ones who separated and rescued yourself. You can't sanctify yourself or make yourself holy. I'm the one who does that. So observe the Sabbath because it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it is to be put to death. Those who do any work on that day must be cut off from their people. For six days work is to be done, but the seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest, holy to the Lord. 
Isn't that interesting that in verse 14, it's holy to you, and then in 15, it's holy to the Lord. It's a mutual thing. We're dedicating it to him. He's dedicating it to us. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day must be put to death. The Israelites are to observe the Sabbath, celebrating it for generations to come as a lasting covenant. Do I hear a cricket? Was that? Someone's setting the timer on me. I believe that the punishment was so severe and it's still in the text for us to see today because actually violating Sabbath violates the way we've been made. If we're made in the image of God, we're actually made to rest. Sometimes the holiest thing you can do is take a nap, right? I don't know, that doesn't really totally fit right there, but I'll just say it. So when we live without rest, we're actually violating what God is intending for us. And it's death to our souls. And so God gives Sabbath day rest as a covenant sign between him and his community. And so if you look throughout um, the Torah, those first five books, you, you see the, the scattered instructions on Sabbath. In Exodus 34, 21, you see that Sabbath is a day um, to rest from work, even in the reaping season, even when harvest is un- under full sway. Stop, God says. And then in um, chapter 35, verse 2, two through 3, there's another reminder to rest. And not just you, but even those who work for you, your animals and your slaves and the foreigners among you, Why? So that they may be refreshed. That's absolutely fascinating to me. So the Sabbath is a day to rest from work, to stop. But it's also, it was a day to gather for worship. You look at Leviticus 19.3 and 30, and you look at Leviticus 23.3-4, and you see that those days were days to remember as a community who God was and how he had set them apart. And then the Sabbath was a day to remember that God is the one who makes us, frees us, and sanctifies us. I'm going to, if you will go to the next slide. Um, It says, we rest because he set us up. We rest because he set us free. And we rest because he set us apart. I encourage you to read those texts for yourselves and you can see it. But in the Ten Commandments, as they're given in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5, the, the command for Sabbath is the longest command, and God gives a reason in both of them. In Exodus, the reason for the command is because God rested. And so it's a, it's a day to remember God made us. He is the maker. He's the master of molecules. It's wonderful. Isn't it great? And then in Deuteronomy, when the Sabbath is explained, um, God reminds the people, You were slaves, and I set you free from the Egyptians. And so when you rest, you are declaring to the world you are not owned by anyone. You have been set free. And so as Christians, we look back at that, and we're like, oh, yeah, Jesus is our maker, and Jesus is the one who sets us free. So when we rest, we remember he's the one who has put us on this planet, and he's the one who has set us free to live in relationship with him. Hallelujah. And then in Exodus 31, which we just read, we rest because to remember that it's him who sets us apart as holy. We cannot sanctify ourselves. We can, the, there's no self-improvement program that will make us more and more like Christ. He is the one who sets us apart for his holiness and his good work in this world. So we rest because he set us up, because he set us free, and he set us apart. Now, isn't it a wonder that in Exodus 31, that he inspired the writer to record this, that as he was speaking to Moses, the seventh set of commands as Moses is up on Mount Sinai receiving the word from God that he's about to bring down to the people of God. It's the last word before Moses goes down the mountain. If you read ahead in 32, you see that The people have already forgotten and they're worshiping a golden calf. But it's the last word. 
But is it not interesting that God gives the Sabbath command and points back to the fact that God rested and was refreshed? That, that word, refreshed, is closely connected to the Hebrew word for soul or spirit. If you've ever watched any of the Bible Project videos, they have one on soul and spirit. They talk about the word nephesh. It's connected to that word. It's the same word used in Exodus 35, 20, or 35 verses 2 through 3, where God instructs the people to take a Sabbath so that the foreigner among them could be refreshed or re-spirited, could catch their breath. It's the same word that is used when David was running from his son Absalom and he stopped at a river and was refreshed or renewed or respirited. He caught his breath. Is it not interesting that in Exodus, God says that he himself, the maker of the universe, had worked so hard he needed to catch his breath? Isn't that fascinating? This has been poking in my brain, wrestling in my spirit all week. He'd put six days of creative and genius work, and then on day seven, <sighs> how many of you need to catch your breath? And the reflection questions that we put out every week with the um, sermon and that the more class goes over and many NOMA groups go over. Uh, and I encourage you to do a Sabbath audit and ask this question. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being exhausted and 10 being refreshed, how rested are you in this season? I understand. Because the truth is, is we as humans struggle to rest and catch our breath. When you look at the Ten Commandments, the first three have to do with our relationship with God and then the Sabbath, and then the last six commandments have to do with our relationship with others. Violating the Sabbath is actually trying to be God, thinking that we don't have to turn off we can always be going, always be producing, always making something happen. God knew that. That's why he put the Sabbath day as an invitation for us as humans to... <sighs> we're just doing the whys today, no hows. As people walked out later today, they were asking me, well, can I do this today? Can I do that? That's not the point. Don't ask me, talk to God, and then come back and ask me, all right? The point is to find your rest in God. Find your peace in him. Many of us are exhausted actually because of good things. Some of us are exhausted because of sin in our lives. We are losing sleep because we're watching things that really are rotting our souls. We're, we're losing sleep and losing rest because we're chasing things that will fill us up for a moment, but then let us down with disappointment. But God gives us rest that never leaves us disappointed. We may be physically tired, but there's a rest in our mind and in our heart that cannot be taken away by the world. So we're going to return to our, our memory verses, and this is how we're going to end. It's impossible to find true rest without finding it in God himself. If I could change my slides, I would change one thing, and I would capitalize the word rest in Psalm 116.7. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. Go ahead and just, if you want to say it out loud, um, just whisper that. If you just want to say that in your mind, say that to yourself right now. And for me, when I, when I do that, then I just start listing the ways that he's been good to me and why I can rest in him. 
And then isn't it, isn't it incredible that Jesus said this verse in Matthew 11? Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. You notice he's not like, shame on you for carrying those burdens. If you had done what you knew was right in the first place, you wouldn't be in the situation that you're in. You ought to know better. That's not how Jesus is. He's like, come on, come here, come here. You ever had that moment where you just needed a hug more than anything else? That's what Jesus always has for us. And as we receive his rest and learn from him, we become the kind of people that we can actually share the rest and share the goodness that he gives to us. And so we're just gonna, we're gonna close this service with this. Where are you weary and what burdens are you carrying? You know that. I'm going to invite you to just come to him and say, I'm weary here, God. Jesus, I'm carrying this burden and I need you to carry it. The burden could be a bunch of good things. The the burden could be some sin that you have not given up that you need to say, I'm repenting from this. You can't learn from the Savior if you hold on to your sin. You can't be set free if you're just hugging it close. So I'm going to pray, and if while I'm praying, you want to come to the altar and pray and just lay your weariness um, down and trust him with your burden, I encourage you to come. Jesus, thank you. That song that we sang, the son of suffering, is a reminder that you came and paid the price for all of our failures. You took inside of your body all the world's exhaustion. All the things that we've chased that always let us down, like you took all of that in yourself and buried them in the grave. You conquered it all for us. And it's not lost on me that you were in the grave on a Sabbath day. You laid to rest all the things that we can't carry on our own. You did the the heavy lifting so that we could learn from you and live rested and refreshed and renewed in you. So here, your sons and daughters, as they pray and they tell you about the things that are wearying them, the things that they are carrying that are too heavy for them, hear their hearts and may they hear yours. And would you, would you help us on our journey of becoming like you, Jesus? <laughs> you understood what the pace of the world was and you did not let the um, commands of this world dictate the way you would live. You got away and rested. It was your custom to do that. Would you bear with us and help us align our minds and our hearts with your way of rest so that we can align our minds and our hearts with your way of work. Would you help us remember that according to the order of creation, you made humanity and then rested, which means that the first day that after humanity was created was a rest day, not a work day. And then you sent humanity into creation to work. Help us, Lord. Renew us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand for a blessing. Um, If you're new, we're really glad you're here. Um, We have people at our Next Steps table if you want to talk with someone. Um, If you filled out the Connect card, you can give it to them, or you can put it in the Joy box Um, on your way out. And if you are a regular attender, you can put your um, offering in there as well. If you'd like to receive a blessing, you can just put your hand out like this. And here's the word from Jesus himself. May you come to him with your weariness and your burdens, and may you find rest in him. Return to your rest, my brothers and sisters, for the Lord has been so stinking good to you. He made you. 
He's freed you and he's sanctifying you. Amen.